I must tell you that my state of desire tended simply toward an elsewhere, another time, and otherwise that might contain something, or let's say the world, or contain only me, or me in relation to something, or to the world, or something, the world, without me anymore. Now this passage really exemplifies what I think uh, Deacon has been talking about for a long time now. Uh, after all, he did call his book Incomplete Nature because there is something strangely incomplete, something strangely absent. And the fact that we're now uh, starting to see that this isn't just in us, it's not just us who are obsessed with uh, everything that is absent, that is absent, that is to say, uh, meaning the past, future, um, our incomplete ends but actually the, this theme runs throughout nature, throughout the living world. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to also comment on um, this two uses that, of absence that we can distinguish. The first is constraint, and in the biosemiosis paper, Deacon goes, talks a little bit about um, those reduced degrees of freedom. And how we can compare that with as yet realized aims. Now, we don't really have a full answer to this, but I think it'd be interesting to discuss how degrees of freedom contrast from yet realized aims, which are more like potential futures, whereas uh, degrees, restricted degrees of freedom are restricted potentialities rather in the present, or at least I feel. Um, I wonder what you guys make of that, and um, I'd like to hear opinions on it.